welcome back to Disasters and DIYs. My name is Janie and I have a couple of guest stars here with me today. <laughs> this is Freedom, my granddaughter, she's five, and Howie, my granddaughter, she's 10. And we have little Oliver here. He is the newest member to our family and he's joining us today as well. You've seen Freedom before. She's been in the bloopers of her mama's videos. And Hallie, she kind of does the behind the scenes stuff. She's my musical director. She's been picking out all of the music for my videos lately. So as you're watching those DIYs and you're grooving along, just be thinking about Hallie. She's the one that got you dancing. So if you are stopping by today to show our channel some love, please drop a comment down below and let us know you're here. Say hello. Tell us where you're from. And stick around because here I'm going to show you a little sneak peek of what we're going to be making today. Stay tuned. Grab a snack and grab a drink and, and, do, and just ease it all up and roll it while the video is going. Exactly what she just said. Alrighty, and enjoy the video. <laughs> In this video, I have created three high-end rustic farmhouse DIYs as part of the big farmhouse decor makeover project that I've been working on. You can find all supplies listed below in my description box. All right, so if you're liking the DIYs, if you're liking me and you're liking Courtney and the channel, please make sure to subscribe to our channel. Hit the like button on all of our videos. Leave lots of comments. We want to hear comments and we want to hear from you guys. So please, and share with your friends and your families all of our videos so we can keep growing and keep making fun stuff to keep you guys all entertained. To subscribe to our channel doesn't cost you anything. It's all free. You can also follow us on Instagram. That's also free. You can so, love the puppy if you want. You can love the puppy if you want. So sit back and relax. Like Freedom said earlier, we're going to get right into these DIYs. All right, let's go. DIY number one. In this first DIY, I'm going to take these oversized letters that I ordered from Amazon and put them together with a clock that I have in my kitchen that's shaped like a teapot. These letters you'll be able to find linked in my description box below if you're interested in ordering them. So right here I am taking the black acrylic paint by Craftsmart and I'm just giving each letter a nice coat of this. The, the letters are really porous wood so it soaks up this paint so I'm just making sure that it, to be pretty generous and hitting all of the edges because once it's up on the wall you're going to be able to see any edges that are missed. So now I'm going to take some Waverly chalk paint in the color Mineral and I, with, along with my chip brush and I'm going to add some distressing to these letters. You can kind of see off to the side the bottom edge of the clock that I'm going to be pairing up with these letters and so I'm trying to imitate that look but still keeping the, the, the dark color of the letters. I, I want the letters to be different but yet very similar so it's it's a fine line that I'm trying to achieve here so I'm being very particular with the way that I'm applying this paint. in with some white acrylic paint that I bought from the Target Dollar Spot. I'm using that same chip brush and I'm just going in and adding another level of, of dimension to these letters to mimic what that clock looks like. up on the wall I'm just going to use these removable little strips they're they're velcro pretty much and these letters are super lightweight so these will will hold them up nicely up on my wall <music> Here 
they are all hung up paired up with that cute little clock I love the shape of it and how it mimics a lowercase a or at least to me it does when you move in closer you can see better the the streaks that are on the letters are very similar to that that you see in the clock I am really happy with the way that these turned out and I hope you like them too DIY number two. In this next DIY, I'm going to take this milk can that I bought at Michael's on clearance. I'm guessing it was clearanced because you can see the two pieces are different types of metal. So I'm guessing they're, they're from two different um, pieces and then they were just put together. So I'm going in with some white chalk paint by Art Mines. And I'm going to give both of these a nice coat. So this top piece here didn't really give me any trouble. Um, I should have figured out right off the bat that my chalk paint was probably in desperate need of some water being added to it because periodically you're going to see me stopping to pick out little chunks out of my paint. But for the most part, this top piece accepted the paint pretty good for the first coat. So now I'm moving on to the main body of the milk can and you can see the surface of this piece is shinier than the top. And if it hadn't have been in the negative degrees outside, I would have probably went out and spray painted this piece rather than try to apply chalk paint. But I went ahead and was putting on the chalk paint, trying really hard to make it as smooth as I could without having any brush strokes in it. Now keep in mind my chalk paint is not very good at this point and so I learned later that uh, yeah just just keep watching so you can kind of see here that I'm not getting very good coverage on my first coat and my paint is kind of moving around and so uh, that's that's not a, a good thing and I, I should have stopped there and went ahead and did the whole spray paint thing but no your girl kept on going and instead of letting it sit and dry the way it should I got impatient and tried to speed up the process with my heat gun going in and trying to make that paint dry now with chalk paint you have to be careful using this technique because the heat will make it crack i lucked out in that respect it didn't happen however more things did keep watching and here i'm adding the second coat to the top piece and no issues whatsoever i, I got great coverage with that second coat And now I'm applying the second coat to the base of the milk can and started out looking like I was going to get some good coverage and because I didn't let that paint sit and it was already on there moving around in the first place it just kept on moving and so I had chunks of paint I had thick spots and thin spots it was a hot mess
this girl does not give up easy. I got the bright idea. I'll just get some water and I will smooth it all down with some water. So I'm dipping my paintbrush of the water and going over that paint thinking maybe I could get those thick spots to thin out. Yeah, only made it worse. Girl, you need to stop before, <laughs> before you really mess it up. But I kept on a going. about 10 really deep breaths and stepping away from it for a little bit I got the idea to pour some of my chalk paint out and add some water to it and get it thinned down like I should have in the first place however we won't go there once I got the paint all thinned out I thought if I took some makeup sponges because they are really tightly they have tight pores and the particular ones that I got I bought them at Walmart I'll link them below in the description box. They're really soft, and so I thought if I went in there and I sponged the paint over in those areas that were thinner, maybe I could start to get this to look a little more, a little smoother and fix my issue. But just keep watching. <laughs> was was doing a pretty good job but then I got the bright idea of well let's kind of smooth it around and let's add some more water like that worked in the first place well no it didn't it didn't help at all I, I should have quit while I was ahead Ultimately, I gave up and took it out into the garage, opened up the big garage door, braved the cold weather, and gave it a couple of good coats of that cheap 97 cent Walmart paint. And that helped out some, um, but it ends up being a blessing in disguise. So now is the fun part, putting in all of the details and making it look like a chipped enamel piece rustic with with lots of rust and wear and tear so I'm coming in with the Waverly chalk paint in the color ink and I'm starting out by painting the handles a solid black because I want those two the handles to be a definite contrast from the body <music> taking a thin paintbrush and I'm going along all of the edges with that ink Waverly ink chalk paint and um, just brushing it along I'm not really being precise with it just letting it be thicker in some areas and thinner in others I, I, I want it to look like just regular wear and tear where that enamel has chipped away you'll see me go along the body and put in little um, little divot marks for a lack of a better way to describe it making it look like it it got chips in the middle of the body this just gives it a little bit more character and makes it look worn and old <laughs> and I'm adding in all of these little details of the chip marks I'm looking at the surface of the white paint and actually the uneven areas and, and all the trouble that I went through actually adds to the look that I'm going for with this milk can it makes it look even more worn so it, it was definitely a blessing in disguise uh, I just took the really hard road to get there Now 
I'm coming in with some Apple Barrel acrylic paint in the shade of Burt Umber. I like to use this shade when I'm trying to make something look rusted, um, old, and, and distressed. And so I'm going to use a combination of one of those makeup sponges and a very fine uh, bristle little detail brush to get in there and and add some rust around some of these chip marks really concentrating around the handles giving it a lot of depth and character can is all painted and I have my chip marks and my rust and all the places that I want it to be it's time to add the florals so I put a good bit of hot glue in the bottom of this floral foam so it will stay in place better once I get the florals put in and you can see here I'm putting the the top back on to the the base of the can and those details and all that rusted area really makes it look old and, and beat up. So this here is some lamb's ear I purchased at Walmart. I'm going to use two different pieces of, of this greenery and I just folded the stems over because if I choose to take this apart later it's just nicer to have the full stems rather than to shorten them up and, and uh, cut them down. And now I'm using some lavender that I purchased at Walmart as well. I did take and cut these pieces apart. That way then I have a little bit more control as to where I can place it and have it look a little better no matter which way you look at the arrangement. yellow flowers that I'm adding to the arrangement are called Queen Anne Lace. Um, yeah, I don't pick the names of these flowers, but uh, I purchased these at Walmart as well. And, and I'm cutting those apart just like I did the lavender so I can just place them throughout their arrangement just to give them a little, it a little bit of, of a pop of color. These little white sprigs, I don't know the names of those. Um, it, you could see I took the leaf, the all of the foliage off of this flower. It, it was a fall pick that I got back in the fall and I didn't want that the fall colors to be in this arrangement because I wanted to keep this looking more like I just picked wildflowers out of a field and the fall colors I think would have interfered with that. As a finishing touch, I wanted to add a little bit of depth to the color of these flowers, so I took these burgundy looking, I, I don't even know what these are, I've had them in my stash of florals for a while and so I don't even know where I got them, but uh, I thought that they added a nice dark uh, look to the, the flowers to give it uh, more dimension for the eyes to look at. And here she is, all complete with her flowers arranged. It She turned out so pretty. Gave me a big fit in the beginning, but in the end, I'm really, really pleased with how she turned out. All of the rust and, and the chipped enamel makes her look like she's been through a, a hard life. And really, she only gave me a hard life creating her. <laughs> But like I said, it all turned out in the end and I'm extremely happy with the way that this turned out. DIY 
DIY number three. In this next DIY, I'm going to take these four picture frames and turn them into a faux rustic worn window frame. Now, here in Alaska, we don't have the, the luxury of going to Dollar Trees. So last October, when we were in the lower 48, my husband, uh, Mr. DIY, let, uh, took me around to several Dollar Trees and I stocked up on some supplies. Well, these frames I got at Dollar Tree. So you can see I'm attaching them together using large craft sticks that I purchased at Lowe's and I'm just using hot glue to uh, put them together and, and with the the craft sticks it adds the extra stability to the frames and like I said keeps them together. Now that I have all the frames together, I'm going to add chicken wire to the window openings to give it that farmhouse look. Now this chicken wire I purchased at Michael's and it's a smaller, uh, smaller grade, I don't know what you call it. The, the, the holes are smaller than the chicken wire that I used on the hutch project in my previous video. I'll, I'll make sure and link that video down in the description box. But this, this here chicken wire fit better for this project since this is a much smaller project. And as you can see, I'm just, I, I measured it and I'm cutting it to fit so I don't have a whole lot of excess hanging over. And now I'm just making sure that it's placed evenly and I'm gonna take my staple gun and use those craft sticks to be able to staple this chicken wire into place. And, and you can see I have, you know, two sides there where I can secure the chicken wire with staples, but then that the other side on the outside edge, I don't have that. So here in a minute, you're gonna see how I remedy that. So here I am taking a wooden bamboo skewer that I got at Walmart and I am measuring it to fit the length of that outside edge and I'm taking my wire cutters and trimming it down so it's a nice fit. What I'm going to do with that skewer is I'm going to use it as the base to be able to glue this wire to that outside edge and I felt having the bamboo boost this say that ten times bamboo skewer um, would give me more of a surface for the glue to stick to um, and, and making a better bond with the, the outside edge of the frame you can see I'm taking the edges of that chicken wire and I'm just curling it around that bamboo, that bamboo skewer so I can twist it and give the, the chicken wire a, a straighter fit to where it, it's nice and, and flat on the window surface. going in with the hot glue starting in the middle area and I'm pulling that chicken wire tight and then holding down that area. Now I held on to it for quite a while but I cut all that out because I didn't think you needed to be bored with watching me hold down uh, a, chi uh, a bamboo skewer with hot glue. But you can see I'm giving it a nice generous uh, amount of hot glue both on the inside edge and on the outside edge there so it's nice and firm. And now it's all complete. I have all four sections covered with the chicken wire. Time to paint. I'm coming in with the Waverly chalk paint in the color Truffle and I'm going through giving it uh, a nice coat. I'm not being too particular about making it uh, full coverage because you'll see here in a moment I'm going to distress it and it's not going to matter anyhow. Mm -hmm. 
And to give that paint a little extra boost with drying, I'm using my heat gun to speed up that process so we can distress. And using white chalk paint by Art Minds and my chip brush, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna give this a really heavy dry brushing meaning there's no water on my brush whatsoever it's dry with paint and i'm giving it a nice like i said heavy coat so it looks like it's been out in the weather and uh, really worn frame is painted I set it aside so it could dry and I'm gonna go to work on the little wreath that I'm gonna use uh, to finish it off so I'm taking this 8 inch wire wreath form that I bought while I was at the Dollar Tree and I'm attaching these boxwood greenery picks to the wreath and you can see I had separated them all out and now I'm just laying them in uh, various areas just making sure that I have enough pieces and that I get a nice full uh, amount going all the way around and here I'm taking some green floral wire and I will take each piece and attach it using that floral wire boxwood all arranged on the wreath there and now I'm going to add this next greenery it's called wheatgrass I, I purchased this at Walmart um, I got the boxwood at Walmart as well so I am I cut it apart using the little individual pieces I'm laying it in there and kind of bending it around the, the form to, to have a curve and, and go along with the, the boxwood and the shape of the wreath. And as before, I'm taking the floral wire and going in and securing it down tightly so it doesn't fall off of my form. For the finishing touch, I'm going to cut apart this lavender pick that I purchased at Walmart and strategically place them throughout the wreath, just giving it a little bit of lavender color here and there. To attach the wreath to my window frame, I'm going to take this piece of burlap that I cut, I, I purchased this from Michaels over, I believe it was the fall season. And uh, it's a nice ribbon that is universal and looks really good in farmhouse decor. So I, I measured it to where I wanted the wreath to fall on my window frame. And once I get that placed, I will flip it over and secure it with my trusty staple gun so it doesn't fall off when I get it hung up on my wall. And here 
there it is, the finished product with that wreath placed beautifully in the center of the window and hanging up on my dining room wall just adds that extra little touch. I have to say that out of all of these DIYs, this one is by far my favorite. If you liked these DIYs, please make sure to let me know in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. Don't forget to ring the notification bell so you are notified of all future uploads. Thank you so much for spending the time with me and watching me do my DIYs. Stay tuned because you're going to see a couple of little goof ups from Hallie and Freedom and I. Take care. Welcome back to Disasters and DIYs. My name is Janie and I have some special guests with me today. This is my granddaughter Freedom and this is my granddaughter Hallie. And we also have little Oliver here. He's our, our little clown. And let's get a sneak peek going. Grandma just messed that up. Oh my goodness. We were doing, we were it was such really a good, good. track. Wait, really Grandma, good. Look, we were Grandma, rolling and it's like a something? big stop. I got tongue tied. Grandma, can I please tell something? <laughs> <laughs> we just made a blooper. Okay, so, all right. So let's start all over. Okay. <laughs>